Praise the Lord Jesus. Pray for the hearers. We're street preaching in San Clemente. Pray for the hearers to hear the word of God, for their hearts to be pricked by the power of God's word. Pray for the backsliders who are uh, in sin, who aren't doing the will of the Father. And uh, pray for us to, to uh, be effective out here. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus, San Clemente. Praise his holy name. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Everything that has breath praise the Lord in Psalms. In Psalms it says, your word is a lamp under my feet. It says that I eat your word, I've hidden it in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Praise the Lord. It says the word of God is active and alive in Hebrews 4.12. It's powerful, it's active and alive, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's piercing soul and spirit. It's dividing bones and marrow. It's a discerner of the heart and mind. That's what the Word of God does. It never returns void in Isaiah 55. God's Word never returns void. What does that mean? It means that when His Word is preached, it goes and performs something on your heart. It's either going to produce uh, repentance and belief if you're not a believer. And then, or if you're a believer, it's going to edify you. It's going to quicken you because Jesus said his words are spirit and everlasting life. And the, the prophets in the Old Testament ate the word of God. They ate it. And, and we get this saying in the Old Testament and the New Testament that they've ate the word of God. And it's sweet to the mouth and bitter to the belly because it's a sweet love story. The Bible is a sweet love story about the Lord Jesus Christ, about God loving this world so much. In the Old Testament, he sent out prophets, and they prophesied about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, God's only begotten Son, and, and they, were, they were stoned and martyred, many of the prophets, for coming to warn what, what God's heart's all about. And so that, that is what we preach to you today, this word that is so beautiful because it's a love story on God's redemptive plan, God's redemptive plan to deliver us from sin. Jesus came to deliver us from sin, the Bible says in Matthew 1. He came to set us free from sin, it says, that you would no longer be a slave of sin, but a slave of righteousness, that you would follow the Lord Jesus who died for you, that you would die to self, that you would hear the word of the Lord today and be changed, that, that the word of the Lord would be magnified in your heart, that you would have understanding of what God wants you to do in this life, to obey him and to worship him. And Jesus came and he said, Verily, verily, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God in John 3, 3. So you have to be born, of get, born again to even see the kingdom of God. How many churches are telling you that? And, and Jesus talked about the kingdom of God. And he showed you who is in the kingdom of God and who is going to endure and, and make it to the end in the kingdom of God. But you have to be born again of the water and the spirit to even see the kingdom of God. And so Jesus was preaching to, to the religious Pharisees to tell, to tell them the good news, and they couldn't hear the word of God. They, Jesus said this, he said, these men honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, teaching the doctrines and precepts of men. They worship me in vain. Is, is, that is something very heavy right there, that people can be in church with their hands lifted up, uh, worshiping in vain because they've left the word of God for, for men's doctrines, for other teachings. And, and Jesus warned about that. Jesus talked about it, false prophets, and he talked about by their fruits you will know them. And Jesus said in John 7, 24, do not judge by outward appearance. How many of us before we were born again judge by outward appearance? I would look at somebody based on their sunglasses. I would look at somebody based on their shirts. And I would judge, okay, he's a punk rocker, or he's, he's into rap music. And I would judge by appearances. And, and of course we can judge by appearances, but Jesus said, do not judge by appearances. Judge with righteous judgment. And so how are we going to know what is of God and, and what is not of God? By the word spoken. Jesus said in John 8, why don't you understand my speech? Is it because you're of your father, the devil, in John 8? And so all the disciples of Jesus are going to preach his words. Paul said it like this. Uh, if I preach anything other than Christ crucified, I, 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 I basically lower the power of the cross. It says the wisdom of this world is foolishness. It's foolishness. But Christ crucified is the power that's going to save us. And he says like this in 1 Corinthians 1, he says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, 
but to we who are being saved, it's the power of God. Are you being saved by the power of God right now? Are you a believer? Are you a believer in all of the Lord's words and the apostles' words? Because Jesus said in Matthew 7 that many are going to say in that day, Lord, Lord, we prophesied, we cast out devils, we did many wonderful works. And to this group of people, Jesus says they weren't doing the will of the Father and they were workers of sin. He says, depart from me, ye that work sin. I never knew you. Go to Ezekiel 18. It says, those who practice righteousness are righteous. And it says this, if a man be righteous his whole life and turn and do wickedly, all his righteousness is forgotten. So you can be righteous and then start to turn and fall away and become wicked. The Bible says all your other righteousness is forgotten. That's how Matthew 7 fits. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, can somebody... If it falls again, just hold it. Praise the Lord. So Matthew 7 is saying, narrow is the way. It's, it's a narrow path following Jesus. But, and it's difficult. You, you're going to have to overcome this world. Jesus said that uh, whoever comes after me must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. Jesus says if you put anything above him, your family in Luke 14. If you put your job in front of him in Luke 14. If you put your property in front of him in Luke 14. You are not worthy of him. And these are three things that will keep you out of the kingdom of God. So Jesus came preaching about the kingdom of God. And he said in Matthew 13, he said that there are four ways you can hear this word of God. It's called the parable of the sower. So please hear the word of the Lord. You can hear it and not believe it. And the, and the bird comes and he snatches that word that, that I'm giving you today. He snatches it out. That's like an, uh, an atheist or somebody who believes in science or somebody who is denying Jesus as the only way. Those are all unbelievers. They might profess Christianity. They might go to church. But if they don't believe all of the word of God, the deeper things, the harder things, and they're actually called unbelievers. They're masquerading as believers. They profess to know God, but it says by their works, they deny him. That's how you can be if you're not a follower of Jesus. You can hear the word of God and just say, oh, I don't believe that it was written by men, but I believe all these other parts. You're not a believer. The second here is actually a believer. He hears the word of God in Matthew 13, 21, but he does not endure tribulation and persecution for Jesus Christ, which is the word of God. And they become offended. So Jesus came and he preached and he warned about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders that didn't receive his word. And he called them vipers. He called them sons of the devil. And so Jesus came warning about how to be a true believer. You must, you must believe that Jesus is who he said he is. And you must believe all his words. Because here's what Jesus said. If you don't, if you don't believe all his words and you're ashamed of him and his words, he will be ashamed of you when he returns with, with, in the glory with the holy angels. So this is for professing Christians. We're in the we're in United States right here. We're in Southern California, very rich. We have so many churches and so few street preachers. There's so few people. But Jesus never said, go build a big church. Show me in scripture where Jesus said, go build a big church. I'll show you where he didn't say that. He said, I send you out to the highways and byways in Luke 14 to go compel them to come into the kingdom of God. He said, go out into all the world. Go out into all the world and preach ye the gospel. He said that. He said in Mark 16, 15, go out and preach to all creatures. So Jesus didn't say build big churches, have one pastor and stay in your churches and preach 12 steps inside your rooms and preach psychologies and all of these other vain philosophies. He never said that. In fact, he said against that. He said, you don't know the power of God because you've made it void. You've made God's power void by leaving the word of God. That's what he said. So he came warning about false Christianity. And then he came warning about the great falling away. The Lord Jesus gave us all the warnings. In Matthew 7, he said, beware of false prophets who come to you as sheep, but they're actually in wolves' clothes. And he says, you will know them by their fruits. He says, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. He said, make the tree good and the fruit good. That's what Jesus said. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
That's in Luke 16 or somewhere around there where Jesus is showing you wherever your treasure is, that is where your heart is. So where, whatever's coming out of your mouth is how we're supposed to judge righteously if it's the word of God or if it's against the word of God. If you are born again, my friends, your ears are going to be circumcised to the word of God. Your heart is going to be circumcised. And that's why the apostles taught test every spirit, not every spirit as of God, for there are many antichrist spirits. So you test the spirit. If it's bearing witness that it's got any lies in it, if it's bearing witness that it's contrary to what the Lord Jesus preached and to what's in our scriptures, then they are a false teacher. Some of them don't know it. Some of them are new in the faith and they, they've been taught wrong by other men. That's why you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to understand the word of God. That's why Paul said that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to we who are being saved, it's the power of God. Somebody hold the sign. If they fall over, hold it. Just hold it somewhere. Just hold it somewhere. No, I don't want it to fall over again. Just hold it somewhere. Distract. Praise the Lord. So look, you got to be born of the Spirit of God to understand the Word of God. So Matthew 13, there are many, there are four ways you can hear the word. The first one doesn't, doesn't receive it. The second one receives it, but does not endure tribulation and persecution. Please, church, hear about tribulation and persecution. If you're not enduring tribulation and persecution, you become offended. You want your, you want your church to be your way. You want to take everybody to your pastor. You want to go to your conferences and you don't want to come out and preach. Did you know in the book of Acts, there are two, parts to the body. In the very book of Acts, there's those who minister in prayer and the word are the street preachers and the rest are serving tables. It's that simple. You're either ministering to the needs of the saints or you're out there street preaching. It's, it's never any different all through scriptures, my friends. And so hear these words because these words are what pricked my conscience. What kind of believer are you? What kind of believer are you? Are you enduring tribulation and persecution for Jesus? Or are you siding with LGBT? Are you siding with the sorcery shot, the, the vax? Are you siding with, uh, with, with the w World Economic Forum? Are you siding with this great falling away church who wants to join the Pope, who wants to join all religions together because this is the day that we're in right now. If you're not standing for truth and righteousness, if you're not quickened by the power of God to come out of your church building, something is wrong with your walk right now because these church people, they're spectators. They're supposed to come out of the building. They're supposed to mourn for those who are on drugs and in alcoholism and doing 12 steps instead of coming out here and preaching. And that's what we have is people sitting in the church that just still get drunk. I drive for Uber as a part-time job and I can't tell you how many people are claiming Christ and are drunk and are still cussing like a sailor and they have no fear of God and these pastors are not making disciples of Christ. They're making people who are not even fearing God and the judgments to come. And the Bible talks about judgments to come. And Psalm 37, praise God. Psalm 37, it says the righteous man, his mouth speaketh on judgment. If you are not living righteously, of course, you don't want to hear about the judgments. But once you are born again, the spirit of God, and you are living righteously, and you see what the scripture says, when you see that Jesus said many are going to hell that, that claim his name, then you're going to see that you're supposed to go out to the streets and warn people that Jesus warned. Jesus said many are going to say in that day, Lord, Lord, and they're going to be cast out into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm dieth not, says the Lord Jesus Christ. So are you enduring tribulation and persecution for Jesus? Are you standing on a street corner warning people that you cannot, do, do not be deceived, Paul said to the church. The, the fornicator, the idolater, the, the sodomite, the homosexual, the drunkard, the reviler, the extortioner in 1 Corinthians 6. To the church he's saying, be not deceived, that you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And he says, but you are washed now. You are justified in the spirit of our God. That's not you anymore. That's what he's telling the church. If that's still you and you're in the church, you are deceived. You are deceived and you're on the broad path to hell. You've got to be born again to see the kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus preached is the kingdom of God. And the next, the next scripture after Matthew 13, 21 is the third here. You can hear the word of God, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches will choke it out. No fruit. Matthew 13. It, 
Jesus is not garbage, my friend. Jesus is not garbage. Don't we pray that God forgives you. The words of Jesus are not garbage. The words of Jesus are everlasting life. He laid down his life for you, that you would lay down your life for him and you would follow him, that you would have this burden for souls in these churches, in your family that still are deceived, that are still living for the lust of this world, that are still smoking and getting drunk, and they're still fornicating, and all these things that Jesus said, you will not enter the kingdom of God, that Paul warned, be not deceived. So the first three hearers, two of them believe, my friends, and this is the one that used to prick my heart, and I would admit I was a fake Christian. I'd say, I believe, but I'm not doing the will of the Father. As a runaway kid who trafficked drugs, did 10 years in prison, where God put his spirit in me and he changed me and he resurrected me to new life and then his spirit bear witness that I had to obey him and I had this open door with the Heavenly Father because he had mercy on me and that's what you need you need a testimony my friends because the Bible talks about that those who have a testimony of darkness to light you have a testimony of being conveyed from one kingdom into another. And if that's you, you're going to bear fruit for God's kingdom. There's going to be people that see a difference in you. And they're going to know that the power of God is working in you. And they're going to know that they need something that they don't have. And they're going to seek God while he may be found. They're going to humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. That in due time he may exalt them from a dead person to an alive person. And that's what the Bible talks about. You were once dead in your sins. We were all once dead until the Spirit of God quickened us and made us alive in Christ in Ephesians 2. We were all children of wrath, the Bible says, until he delivered us out of that darkness and conveyed us into his marvelous light. And now we're new creations in Christ, the Bible says. It says everybody who is in Christ is a new creation. All the old is dead. And in Romans 6, it says, if we have truly died with Christ in our baptism, how can we go on living in sin? We are now dead to this world. We're dead to this world. We're dead to sin. We're mortifying the deeds of the body that Christ may live in us. And that is our, we're a written epistle, it says, not written in ink, but with the Spirit of God in our hearts. That's what the Bible says. My friends, four ways to hear, and only one hearer hears the word of God and understands it and has fruit 160 and 30 fold. That goes with that narrow path right there that, that Jesus said many are on the broad path. There's only a few that are following Jesus in spirit and truth. And that's why we're called to come out here and give you these words. In Matthew 13, Jesus goes on with more parables, and he talks about the, the true children, the, the true children of God, and the children of the devil. It's called the wheat and the tares, and he says that the devil has sown in lies from the enemy, and they're children of the devil that grow together with God's children. And these are in God's kingdom, my friends. These are uh, people professing Christianity that are still living for the world just like Matthew 7, if you're still practicing sin, you're going to be cut off and hear those words, depart from me, I never knew you, you that work lawlessness. So in Matthew 13, when he's talking about uh, tares, these are lies sown in from the enemy, he says, let them both grow together until the end of the age, when the Son of Man will send out his holy angels to reap out of his kingdom all who offend and practice sin. They're going to be reaped out of his kingdom. His kingdom are the ones in church, not the world. His kingdom are the ones in church. Let me give you more scripture. First Peter 4 says, as Christ suffered for us, in as Christ suffered for us, also you must arm yourself with the mind of Christ. He who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. And then he talks about the house of the Lord is judged first. If scarcely a believer be saved, where will the ungodly and sinner appear? And he says, you must suffer for Christ now, because in times past, we did suffer as evildoers, as drunkards, as revilers, as all of these other things that the Bible says, we've all done that in our past. But now we suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. And you're not getting that if you're just sitting in your church. And even some people just handing out tracts that aren't giving the full counsel of God's word. Some of these tracts are not even good tracts. The tracks have to show you that you've got to abide in Christ, that, that, that you must be a true believer, that you must obey Christ, because there's many false teachings out there saying, all you got to do is believe and grace will abound. But the Bible says, here's what grace is for. That grace has appeared to all men in Titus 2. 
Grace has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness, to deny worldly lust, to live soberly, to live righteously in this present age, looking for Jesus Christ, our blessed hope, who is redeeming us as a peculiar people who are zealous for good works. Praise the Lord Jesus. So that is a true believer. And when, you, when you're a true believer and you read the word and you hear it and you get sanctified by it, God will open up your eyes to deeper understanding to where you will have to come out. You will have to do something for the Lord because you know people are dying to hear this word. They need it in front of the bars. They need it in front of a lot of these churches. They need it at the pride parades. These poor kids are being taught they might not be male and female. And the church is, is almost silent. They, they might have their talk shows on, on TV. They might have their talk shows on YouTube. But then they go out quiet as a mouse instead of bold as a lion. The Bible says the righteous are bold as lions. But evildoers run when no one's pursuing. Praise the Lord. And so Jesus came preaching about his kingdom and who is truly in it. Jesus talked about a parable of ten virgins. Five, well, all ten virgins are a picture of the church, but five are foolish, but yet they're still looking for the Lord Jesus. That shows you that they're fake Christians, that they're not ready for his return. Five foolish virgins that when Jesus returns, they say to the, to the wise ones, give us oil. We have no oil for our lamps. And the wise one says, go buy your own oil. We are about the master's business. He's returning and we are coming to see him. Go get your own. Stop distracting us. That's what it is. A lot of people come distract you from the word of God being preached. They want to keep you in your house. They want to keep you in your sins. And now those are distractions, my friends. You got to be one of the wise ones who has oil in your lamp, who's ready for the Lord Jesus, who's not buying from this world. If you're buying from this world, the, the oil is going to go out. If you're buying from the big pharma, all these pills people are on, so many people on pills. Uh, did you know that seven out of 10 people in the United States are on some pill and, and, and uh, 20, 25% are on five pills? We're a big pharma pill nation. We're a drugged out nation. Yet, yet the church isn't out here talking about the power of God and his deliverance to deliver you. We got professing Christians calling themselves alcoholics and addicts. But whom the sun sets free is free indeed, says John 8, 31. And this is what we need to preach. Jesus said, those who abide in my word are my disciples indeed. You got to abide in his word. And if you abide in his word, you're going to walk with the Lord. You're going to understand his word. You're going to hear his word. And then you're going to do it. You're going to be a, you're going to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. And he says, those who abide in my word are my disciples indeed. And they will know the truth and the truth will set them free. But the slave does not abide in the house of the Lord forever. But whom the son sets free is free indeed. You got to be set free indeed, my friends. Praise the Lord. Now, now the, the religious people said, we've never been slaves. A lot of people tell us we're good. You must need Jesus because you were an ex-drug dealer. You must ge need Jesus because you were an ex-homosexual. Uh, or you were just wilder than me. I can party and get along okay. I just didn't need Jesus like you. And that's a lot of people's mentality, my friends. But here's what Jesus said to the same kind of people with that mentality who said, we've never been slaves. But Jesus said, whoever is a servant of sin is a slave of sin. So are you a servant of sin or are you a slave of righteousness? Do you have any addictions? Do you have uh, uh, anxiety? Are you taking pills? Are you still uh, in fear of man? Praise the Lord. Are you a servant of sin? Are you a servant of sin? If you're set free, you'll have a testimony. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. The people that knew me as a kid, a runaway kid, I was violent. I was a drug trafficker. They know that there's something that happened to me that changed me. I couldn't even remember any of the books I read. I dropped out of school, yet God baptized me, put his word in me, and now I've got his word in my heart that I must proclaim it. John said, curse it am I if I don't preach. I got to come out here and give you the word of God that can save your soul. And demons do manifest through the preaching. People that are enemies of the cross, they manifest. Praise the Lord. Praise our God, for he is mighty to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. 
He sent his only begotten son that you would see what he did at the cross, that he who knew no sin, he gave himself up to be martyred beyond human recognition, says the prophet Isaiah, 700 years before it happened, that we would be, he would be wounded for our sins, that we, that the chastisement of our peace would be upon him, that we would be uh, healed, healed by him, that he comes to heal us. He'll, he'll deliver you. He'll heal you. He'll give you a new heart. He'll give you his spirit. He'll give you the mind of Christ. That's our Lord Jesus. But you must forsake this life. You must forsake it to find Jesus. Jesus says whoever tries to save their life will lose it. Those who try to save their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for the gospel's sake will find it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Lord Jesus. The Bible says God hates all workers of iniquity. God hates. Did you know that God does have a holy hatred for those who sin against him? Those who kill babies? Do you know the Bible says that it's a sacrifice to demons in, Psalm, in, in the Psalms? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the Lord Jesus came preaching, repent or perish. He didn't come preaching once saved, always saved. He didn't come preaching just and fight me into your heart. In Luke 14, he said, count the cost all the way to the end to be my disciple. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord Jesus. Jesus said, whoever endures to the end shall be saved. Matthew, 13, Matthew 24, verse 13. Whoever endures to the end shall be saved. Jesus said that in the day of his coming, his second coming, where he's coming in judgment, Jesus said it's going to be like the days of Lot, which is Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to be like the days of Noah, a preacher of righteousness, where only eight were saved. Jesus said it was going to, that there's going to be lawlessness, lawlessness increasing because sin abounds. He said many false prophets are going to rise up in the last days, deceiving many, even the elect, if that were possible. Jesus said that there's going to be uh, earthquakes in diverse places, that there's going to be pestilence, that there's going to be famines. There's going to be a rising up in the last days, nation against nation. And Jesus said that there's going to be many who fall away, but whoever endures to the end shall be saved, says the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus came and he gave parables about who is going to make it in the end. Those who are buying from Jesus, gold tried in the fire, that they may be clothed in white is what it says. Praise God that somebody's listening and proclaiming. If you're walking in darkness, if you're still walking in sin, Jesus talks about that in Revelation, which we're going to get to. Paul talked about a great falling away in 1 Timothy 4. He said the Holy Spirit expressly states that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits that become doctrines of devils. The word doctrine means a teaching of devils, and it pulls people away from Christ. They've departed from the true faith, and they've listened to seducing spirits that become doctrines of devils. And it says they've had their conscience seared as with a hot iron, speaking lies and hypocrisy. My friends, you will know them by their fruits. If they're speaking lies and hypocrisy, you, you're supposed to test that. You're supposed to see all the false prophecies going forth in these last days about Trump, about uh, world transfer, about all these other things from these people who claim they're apostles. And Jesus gave uh, recognition to those who tried them and proved them to be liars in Revelation chapter 2. That is a disciple to prove those who are false, that their words are, are against Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Believe on the Lord. He died for you. He died for you, my friend. Yeah. Turn into a soldier for the cross. Turn into a soldier for the Lord, my friend. If you actually listen to your lyrics of Slayer and Sepultura, you know it that they're from Satan. I used to listen to that as a runaway kid. Slayer talks about evil, evil things. And so does a lot of the uh, rap music and even country music. Talks about getting drunk and fornicating. And this is not what you want kids to be taught. You need kids to be taught to be holy. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see God. Praise the Lord. Good to see you. It says in Acts 17, 
God has God is commanding all men everywhere to repent. God is commanding all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he proved it by resurrecting him from the dead three days later. We are without excuse is what that verse is saying. He says we're without excuse. We have more than any other, any other people have had. We have so much proof of the Lord Jesus, uh, hundreds and hundreds of prophecies that Jesus already fulfilled. Uh, uh, over a thousand prophecies in the Word of God that are still coming to pass to this day. Revelation 18:23 says the merchants at the very end are going to be the great men of this earth. And by thy sorceries, pharmakia, all nations will be deceived. We see it right now. We see the World Economic Forum putting together a one world currency. They're trying to make people take that vax. They're going to make people be pro uh, uh, the World Economic Forum for global warming and for all these things. And if you're not, you're not going to be a part of their kingdom. So in God's kingdom, he is judging us right now. He's judging us right now. And the Bible says that we will know them by their fruits, says the Lord Jesus. Second Timothy chapter three, he talks about perilous times will come in the last dot in the last days because men are going to be lovers of self, proud, boasters, despisers of those that are good, truth breakers, disobedient to their parents. And he goes on with this list and he says they have a form of godliness, but deny the power they're in from such turn away. And he says evil imposters will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you, man of God, he says, all scripture is God breathed, good for it's, it's inspired by God, and it's good to bring us into understanding. Second Timothy chapter four, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, because the word is good for reproof, rebuke, and edifying the body of Christ unto a, a holiness with all long suffering and patience. My friend, there's about a thousand Bible prophecies. You have no control of your mouth, my friend. No control. Hey, the Lord can save you. The Lord can save you. The Lord can save you. How old are you that you're still using the middle finger? Sir, what are you, like 50 and you can't, you can't control your vessel? You flick us off like a little teenager? There's like a thousand Bible prophecies. You're without God, so the Bible talks about being reprobate unto every good work. You know, at 40 or 50 years old, you should outgrow flicking people off. That should be something you did as a kid. It just shows how wicked you are. Your heart is wicked. Praise the Lord. But God will have mercy if you would just repent and turn to the Lord Jesus. Yes, his hand is outstretched. Praise the Lord. Your behavior proves my sign is true. That's why you walked away, is you can't handle the truth. It's true. You know, the actual preaching of God's word makes things manifest in the atmosphere. That's why God has appointed preachers to go out and preach. It's the proof of who is of God and who's not. Let me give you Second Thessalonians chapter 1. He says, through your manifold tribulations and persecutions, it is proving that you are sons of God and that Jesus is coming back in flaming fire with the holy angels to judge those who know not God or obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the second coming, my friends. Acts 5.32. I told you in the book of Acts, there were either street preachers, ministers of the word, or they were helping feed people. They were, they were serving tables. There were only two groups of people. We've always been called to go out to preach. To, the preaching is the way, way God uses uh, the, the way to reach people. He says that the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. God uses the base things to confound the wise. And through the preaching he's using in these last days, the Bible says, praise God. Acts 5.32 says the Holy Spirit is given to those who obey, to those who obey God. And the Holy Spirit can be taken away, as we see in the book of Isaiah. If you grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can be taken away and fight against you. It's not once saved, always saved. The Bible says, do not quench the Spirit of God. It says, what fellowship has Christ with demons? Come out from among them. Be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you as a father, and you will be my son. So you're a separate people. It says, what fellowship has, has an unbeliever with, with, uh, 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 with a believer? 
So your fellowship is with the saints of God. That's why I, it, it grieves my soul to hear people saying we're all sinners. The Bible says, where will the ungodly and sinner appear? The Bible talks about us being saints of light, holy brethren, divine partakers, set free, set free of sin, no longer needing to call yourself an alcoholic or an addict. How set free are you having to say that every day? Yet that's so many of the churches in the United States going to 12 steps, not even coming out here. They're women ruling over the men, not going out to preach, being ruled by their emotions and their feelings rather than the word of God that endureth forever. The Bible says in 1 Peter, the grass fades and the flower withers, but the word of God endureth forever. We're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. And we are going to be tested by fire and it's going to be made manifest on that day what we have actually done for the Lord. And so Paul is talking about a great falling away, 1 Timothy 4, where some are going to leave the faith. And he says they're going to depart from the faith and they're going to open themselves up to deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils. We see this in the last days. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through the Son in John 14, 6. That means every other way is a liar and a robber. That means the Pope is a joke. He is, he's partnering with the one world religion. He's joining with Islam. He's joining with all the other religions. And how many of other, other mega pastors have bowed down to the Pope to get a photo shoot? And 2 Peter talks about the great falling away. He says there were false prophets among you, so there will be false teachers bringing in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. Their destruction is coming swiftly, it says. And it says that these false teachers, they make merchandise out of God's people using feigned words that they're covetous, that they have eyes that can't cease from sin. Their eyes are full of adultery. They promise you liberty, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. And he says that they have forsaken the right way. My friends, online, in churches that walk by, we've preached to uh, churches in front of churches with Rick Warren. We've preached to people saying, do you know what the way of Balaam is in 2 Peter 2? It says they forsook the right way. So they were once on it, and they went the way of Balaam, the man is the prophet. He, they went the way of Balaam, the man is the prophet. Do you know what happened with Balaam? He spoke for the Lord, but the Moabite king got him uh, greedy for money and greedy for fame. And he became given over and he wanted both. He wanted to have the word of God and he wanted to have the ways of this world. And that's what it says in 2 Peter 2, that they have forsaken the way of truth and they've gone the way of Balaam. And then it says again after that, that it'd be better for a believer that you must escape these people, it says. You must escape them because if after knowing the knowledge of God and the truth, you go back like the true proverb, a dog goes back to his vomit or a pig wallowing in the mud. He says it would be better for you not to know the way of righteousness. That's not once saved, always saved, my friends. That's showing that it's worse for those who are believers that then say, you know what? I'm going back to the world. It's worse for you because you know the truth. You know what the Lord did for you. You know what the Lord's calling is on your life. You know what Peter said? Peter said, make sure of your calling and election. How many churches are telling you to make sure of your calling and election? If you do this, you will never stumble. So many are called, but few are chosen, says the Lord Jesus in another parable. Many are called, but few are chosen. Are you one of the wise? In, in Matthew 7, it's, it, Matthew 7, Jesus said after he gave the Sermon on the Mount, after he warned about false prophets, after he told you the narrow path versus the wide path, after he told you that many are going to say in that day, Lord, Lord, and they're going to be cast out. After all that, Jesus said this, so you would understand and not be manipulatable. A lot of people manipulate that and say, oh, they were trying to earn their way through self-righteous acts of casting out devils and, and doing wonderful works. That's not what it's saying there. What it's saying is they started off right. They had the gifts of God. They were able to, to use Jesus' name for power, but then they started to live in sin. You know how I know that? Because it says it right after. It says, he who is wise is the one who hears these words and does it. And he is likened unto a man who built his house upon the rock. And when the storm came and the winds blew and the waves crashed, it stayed because it was founded upon that rock. That means that they stayed with Jesus. They stayed obeying Jesus and they would not fall away from Jesus. In John 10, it says, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. That's the same thing as saying they obey me and they will not go to another. So when you hear something contrary to the words that Jesus preached and the words we're preaching to you, it's another gospel. Paul said that there are some who masquerade as angels of light. 
Satan masquerades as an angel of light, and so do his ministers of Christ, feigning righteousness. Their ends will be according to their deeds in 2 Corinthians 10 and 11. So see how Jesus said, do not judge by outward appearances, judge with righteous judgment. Well, Satan masquerades as an angel of light, and so do his ministers of Christ, and they pretend righteousness, it says. So you've got to know the truth to be set free, to know that if they're truly of God by what they're preaching and by their lifestyle. We've seen so much adultery in the churches. If you Google search all the Baptist pastors that have been caught in child sexting by the FBI, 400, 500, their doctrine is not producing righteousness. That once saved, always saved pre-tribulation rapture is producing children of the devil who think they can keep going on in sin. And it's in Jude, it says, certain men have crept in unaware, taking the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and turning it into lasciviousness, as if you have a license to sin, that grace may abound. Praise the Lord. Romans 8 says, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You must mortify the deeds of the flesh and walk in the spirit. You want to be holy? Then follow the Lord and follow his word. And, you, and mortify your flesh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Jesus warned in, in Revelation. We see the revelation given to uh, John on the island of Patmos. After he was thrown into a vat of oil. They were trying to kill John. They threw him into a vat of boiling oil. But the Lord wouldn't let him die. Because he prophesied he had some for John to do. Every other apostle that you guys go to these churches and you hear this lukewarm teaching that you're not even coming out of your churches, all 11 apostles were killed for this word. It was not a word that people would receive without, without the evilness rising up against it, my friends. And John was given this revelation and he saw Jesus and he said his eyes were as a flame of fire, his hair was white as wool, his feet were as burnished bronze as if burned by the fire. He had the voice of many waters and the double-edged sword in his mouth, which is the word of God. And John fell down as if dead under this glory. He fell down as if dead and Jesus touched him and he said, fear not, behold, I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and hell. And he, and he says, write down the things that are, the things that shall be, and the things that you see. This is Bible prophecy. And he warns us what's coming in the book of Revelation. And he says that he has the keys of death and hell. And he says, write down these things to the seven churches. And so these are all different pictures of the body of Christ through the seven churches. And they're all for all of us. Just like all of Jesus' words. Because Jesus says, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. That is another way to test a lot of these false teachers who try to say that, that uh, Paul's teaching was different from Jesus's. But no, Jesus said, if you have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit saith unto all the churches. Revelation chapter 2 to the church of Ephesus. What is Jesus looking at, my friends? Anybody who's been in church 20 years, what's he looking at? Is he looking at your love? Is he looking at your faith? He's looking at your works because your works are going to prove your love and your faith. Jesus says, I know your works, that you have labored for my name, that you can't bear those who are evil, that you've tried those who claim their apostles and found them to be liars. But this I have against you to the church of Ephesus, that you have forgot your first love. Remember where thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will move thy candlestick. So this is deeper things of judgment, my friends. That if you're a disciple of Jesus, you need to eat these words and you need to know them. That it's not once saved, always saved. That it's whoever endures to the end shall be saved. The church of Ephesus were street preachers. There was a goddess of Diana that was a Greek goddess and they were worshiping demons. And Paul's spirit was vexed when there was idolatry in the land and he went out to preach to it. Are the churches doing that today? Or are they going out with a watered down gospel against most of the street preachers? I would say it's the latter. They're against most of the street preachers, sending people to be uh, their own uh, podcasters, sending people their own views, rather than going out and getting tribulation and persecution. You know, in the book of Acts, it says we must enter the kingdom of God through many tribulations and persecutions. That ought to tell you if you're really entering the kingdom of God or if you're still worldly, listening to worldly music, loving the world more than uh, being persecuted for the Lord. So Jesus said to the next church of Smyrna, this church is persecuted. He says, you think you're poor, but thou art rich. 
He says, hold fast. The devil is going to cast some of you into prison 10 days. And you're going to go through tribulation. Be faithful unto the death. Do not let anybody steal your crown, he says. To those who overcome, you will not taste the second death, which is the lake of fire. Jesus clearly said to this church, you can't deny his name even unto death. And that is a true disciple that will go down preaching the words of Jesus even unto death. How many churches are telling you that? That's Revelation chapter 2. The next church, the third one, Pergamos. Jesus said Satan's seat is in the church. And Jesus said the way of Balaam in there. So the way of Balaam is forsaking the right way and se selling out to the world. How many churches have sold out to the world? Rick Warren is one who partnered with the uh, uh, ISA in the Quran, praying at the Obama administration, an antichrist prayer, joining the World Economic Forum. He's just one of many who are joining for photo ops with the Pope. They're going the way of Balaam. What does Jesus point to in the midst of that in this church of Pergamos? He says, but my faithful martyr Antipas, the word martyr means witness. And he says to those who overcome, I will write on you a new name that no one knows except he himself. It's intimacy with you and with Jesus. Whatever your tr troubles are, whatever God is, is working on in your life to make you perfect in him, that is gonna be your new name. It's gonna be intimate to you. And he's got a stone. And, and he's going to give it to those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Because where he says, many are called, but few are chosen in Luke 14. Praise the Lord. He gives me the memories of the scriptures. The next church of Thyatira, he talks about all their works, their charity, their last are better than the first. But he says, this I have against you, that you suffer that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess to teach and lead kids into sexual sin and food sacrifice to idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, but she repented not. And he says, to many as have not this doctrine that knows the depths of Satan, I'll put on you no other burden, but to all those who are fornicating with Jezebel and this adulterous uh, style of uh, being a fake prophet in the, in the church, People that are holding on to that adulterous doctrine and actually committing fornication, he says he's going to cast their children into a sickbed and kill their children so that all the churches will know that Jesus is searching your thoughts and your heart. Did you hear that? How many churches are telling you that you're supposed to know that there's judgments coming and that people are being judged? It's clearly what it's saying all through scriptures if you have eyes to see that you're supposed to see the wheat and the tares being set set apart right now, being chastened, where the true church is being proven right now in these last days, who is of God and who is falling away. Revelation chapter 3, the fifth church. This church, he says, you think you're alive. So this church, they think they're alive, but they're dead. He says there's only a few walking in white. Strengthen the things that remain because I've not found your works perfect before my God. Remember the word that's been handed down to you and, and strengthen things that remain. Only a few walking in white. Here's another warning. Jesus says to those who overcome, I will not blot out their name out of the book of life, but I will speak to the Father about them. Did you know that Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father. If you speak of me before men, I will speak of you to the Father. So obviously they weren't evangelizing. That's what it's saying right there. There was only a few walking in white. It was probably a big building where there were a few holy people, maybe even a good pastor, but there wasn't disciples of Christ in that church. They weren't evangelizing. They weren't preaching the word of God. Can you have your name blotted out of the book of life? Well, this is another verse that says you can. So it's not once saved, always saved. Jesus already showed you that in Matthew 13, that some hear the word but will not endure tribulation and persecution. They have no fruit, Jesus says. What happens if you have no fruit all the way to the end? Go to John 15. The Father purges all that are on the vine, which is Christ, that we would bear more fruit. And Jesus says, if you do not bear fruit, you're like a branch that withers and is going to be cut off and thrown in the fire. If you're not bearing fruit for God's kingdom, it's eventually going to be made manifest what your true tree is, what you're truly all about. And if you're not about God's kingdom, you're going to get cut off and thrown in the fire. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You're deceived. The baby has a separate body, separate fingerprints. You're deceived. You're a hateful human being that likes abortion. 
You're a hateful human being that likes babies killed. You're deceived. Praise the Lord Jesus. And many of these people are going to church that are pro-abortion, pro-LGBT, pro-the Pope. Jesus says you can be cut off. In John 15, very clearly it's not once saved, always saved. You got to abide in Jesus. You got to be translated from one kingdom into another. You got to be about the Father's business. When you are, you're going to get persecuted. A lot of people in the churches are going to hate you. They're going to say you're doing it wrong. You don't have enough love. You're, because they don't have ears to hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. They, these words are foreign to them. That's why we come out here, that we would be a living epistle. Jesus said, do not fear man who could kill body, and that's it. Jesus said, I tell you to fear. Fear God who could kill body, then throw soul into hell. So we're not supposed to fear man, my friends. Uh, Jesus said that uh, if it's popular in this world, it's an abomination to God. What's popular to men is an abomination to God. That's part of that narrow path. In, the, in Revelation, the sixth church of Philadelphia, Jesus is represented as he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key that opens and, and no man shuts and can shut and no man can open. Did you know Jesus is the key to your eternal life? But he also has the key that will keep you out. He has the key that will keep you out. If you are not in his kingdom, you are going to be separated for God. And the, and the Bible says, I think it's Luke 16, in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And the, and the, uh, the man that was sent into hell, he said, Moses, go tell my five brothers about this place of torments and give me one drop for my mouth. And he's talking about how he has torments and that he knows and he can recollect. So it when you are in hell, you're going to be able to remember all the words preached to you. You're going to remember all the times you had to repent. You're going to remember these things for all eternity. The Bible shows us a shadow of that through Jesus talking about the, the, uh, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And the rich man didn't give Lazarus any food. And he was cast into Hades which is a holding cell until the lake of fire, my friends. And there's a great gulf fixed between Hades and, and heaven. And in, in, in Revelation, it says that outside the kingdom of God are dogs, sorcerers, sexually immoral, whoremongers, anyone who loves and practices a lie. In first, uh, 2 Timothy 1, it says that they are in eternal torments, those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they're cast out. And, and it's, it's fearful, my friends, that you would hear this word and tremble at the word of God. That you would be born again and, and, and be in Christ. So in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus says to Philadelphia, and he describes himself this way. And he says, because you've kept the word of my patience and have a little strength and have not denied my name and have labored for things that they did. He says, I will keep you from the hour that's going to come try the whole world. And I will cast those who say they're Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan before your feet, to, to, so that they will know that I have loved thee. Many pre-trib rapture uh, Calvary churches take this and say it's pre-tribulation rapture. But hey, Calvary, are you being persecuted by those who say they're Jews and are not? Because that's who this verse is to. It sounds more like it's to Israel, to people who are truly uh, going to be a last day's remnant in Israel to me, because they're being persecuted by fake Jews. Who say they're Jews and are not. And what did we have in the Old Testament where God delivered them from Egypt and he, he la allowed 10 plagues to be proven that he was God, that all the world would hear that God parted the Red Sea, that God did these plagues and he pulled his people out and we're all saved that were pulled out? No. That's why we see to remember the judgments that were handed down before. Second Peter 2 says, remember that the angels that sinned were cast down into outer darkness. So he's saying, remember that. So if you're still practicing sin, remember that the angels that disobeyed God, the third that got cast down into outer darkness, reserved unto that day of judgment. And if God only spared Noah and eight other people, a preacher of righteousness, and God rained down fire on Sodom and Gomorrah, making an example to those who would live ungodly after. So we got judgment upon judgment upon judgment to warn. And he says, but God is able to save those who are, who are righteous. Praise God. He will save you if you're righteous. 
If you're vexed with the filthy conversation and their deeds, it says in 2 Peter 2, are you vexed over the filthy deeds and conversation of the wicked? You're supposed to be. 2 Peter 2 says you're supposed to be. Praise the Lord. And then Jesus says to the church of Philadelphia that he's going to keep them from the hour that's going to come try the whole world to those who overcome. So there's an overcomer to all seven churches. That's not once saved, always saved. That's not pre-tribulation rapture. To those who overcome, I will make you a pillar in New Jerusalem, which comes down. That's talking about the final kingdom where Christ rules and reigns, and he hands the kingdom over to the Father. Whoever has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The seventh church, Laodicea, this whole church, he says, I wish you were hot or cold, but because thou art lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich and have need of nothing and have plenty of goods, but are poor, blind, naked, wretched, and miserable. This is the church we live in here, where they have plenty of goods, where they think that they're okay with God, but they're lukewarm. Jesus says, I'll spit you out. He says, buy from him gold tried in the fire, that you may be clothed in white, that the shame of your nakedness be not exposed, that you may have eyes to have to see. Behold, I chasten those I love. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. To those who overcome, I will grant to sit on my throne, even as I overcame and sat on my Father's throne. How did Jesus overcome when he knew he was going to the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was sweating blood, when he said, not my will, but your will be done, Father? And he knew he was going to the cross. He knew they were going to punch him in the face, rip off almost all his back, and nail him to that cross. And he had already said he was going to do it. And the disciples didn't even hear it. They didn't understand that he said, I was going to die. He said, I'm going to lay down my life. And I'm going to raise it up again on the third day. He said it multiple times. And who heard the word? Mary Magdalene heard the word who had been delivered from demons. So those who have been delivered are called to go out and preach, my friends. Revelation talks about to those who have a testimony. Revelation 12, 11, they overcame. The true church overcomes by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, loving not their own lives, even unto the death. Be faithful unto the death, Jesus said, Revelation 2. Revelation 14, 11, blessed are those who die from henceforth, for their works do follow them. Wherever your works are for this, are your works for God or are they for the devil? Because there's coming a day of judgment. Daniel 12 says some are going to rise to everlasting shame and contempt, but others are going to shine and shine like the stars who lead many to righteousness. Lead people to Christ. Give them the word of God that endureth forever. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Give people the word of God. Do not be ashamed of the word of God. If you're ashamed of him and his words, he's going to be ashamed of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, San Clemente. Praise our God. Praise the Lord. Praise him, all ye saints. Praise him, San Clemente. Praise him all, all across the world. Praise him. We're in the last days where Jesus said a great falling away, where the apostles said a great falling away. We have all the signs right now to show us that we're in the last days. The signs are here. Are you in Christ? Are you a new creation in Christ? Are you dead to the old life that you used to live? If you're not, hear the word of the Lord and obey God. It's not too late if you can still hear the word. It's only too late if you're rejecting all of it. It's too late if you're rejecting it, my friends. If you're given over, the Bible talks about being given over to a reprobate mind. Yeah, as long as you can hear the word, as long as you can hear the word and still receive conviction, you can still cry out to the Lord. It's when you're no longer hearing the word of the Lord and able to be convicted by the word that you're given over. And Jesus talked about that through Paul in Romans 1, where he says that God has made it evident through the creation that by his creation, it's evident that a creator created this world. But men became futile in their minds and they stopped giving thanks to God. And God gave them over to the futility of their minds. And he gave them over to the lust of their hearts. And they did things that were against God. Men with men. It says it's vile men to be with men. It's vile. So people that are saying, where does it say it's a homosexuality is vile? Romans 1, Leviticus all over through the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 6. But so what? Drunkenness is a sin that will keep you out. Smoking drugs will keep you out. It's not just homosexuality. Fornication, sex outside of marriage. So they, they get given over. Women did exchange the natural use with men. 
they lusted for one another and they did things that are unnatural, it says. And then God gave them over to a reprobate mind and they became reprobate. Don't become reprobate. Hear the word of the Lord. Soften your heart this day. Whom will you serve today? Whom are you serving? The true church knows you got to endure to the end. The true church knows it's not just saying a prayer. It's a lifestyle of living for the Lord. Praise the Lord.